Okay, in this video we're going to do a series solution for a differential equation. We're going to find the recursion on all the coefficients of the series and then we're going to explicitly calculate the coefficients a0 through a5, so the first six, and we're taking a series based at uh, x equals zero and we're looking at the differential equation y double prime plus 3xy prime plus x squared plus 1y equals zero. We've got initial conditions y of zero is two and y prime of zero is one. And so that tells us that the first term of the series, a zero will be two, and the second term, a one will be one. And that's because if you plug zero into this, everything collapses down to a zero, which needs to be two, and then likewise if you take the derivative and plug zero in. Okay, maybe the first thing to notice is that by a previous theorem, um, we know that the interval of convergence is the distance between whatever point the series is centered at up to the closest root of the polynomial in front of y double prime. But there's no polynomial in front of y double prime. So that tells us that the interval of convergence here will be minus infinity to infinity, um, which that's nice. So now let's get going with the solution. So, um, as usual, we're going to start by setting y equal to our series and then calculating its derivatives. So, if y equals this sum starting at 0 up to infinity of a n x n, then y prime is the following. So, n a n x to the n just by term by term differentiation. That should be n minus 1. And then likewise, y double prime is the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 a n x to the n minus 2. Great. So now what we want to do is plug these three series into the differential equation and see what the coefficients have to satisfy in order to have a solution. So I'll write that as just the differential equation becomes the following. So we have y double prime times nothing, so that's going to hang by itself at the beginning. So we have the sum n equals 2 to infinity n n minus 1 a sub n x to the n minus 2. Okay, that's good. Plus, now we have 3x times the first derivative, so that's going to be the sum n equals 1 to infinity n a n x to the n minus 1. That's good, and now we have x squared plus 1. So I'm going to write that as 1 plus x squared times this zeroth derivative, so that'll be n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. And now we want that to be equal to 0 if this series is indeed a solution to the differential equation. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is distribute uh, all of the polynomials that are coefficients of y prime and y into the series. So in other words, we want to take this 3x and send it into the series, and then also we want to take these two terms and send them into the series. Okay, so let's see what we get if we do that. So that's going to give us the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n, n minus 1, a n x to the n minus 2. So nothing happened with the second derivative. And now we're going to have plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 3n a sub n x to the n. So that boosted the x to the n minus 1 up to x to the n by multiplying by x. And now this is going to split into two terms. So I'll split it into two sums. So multiplying by 1, uh, we get the original. So that's going to be the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. So that's just our original y. <clears throat> and then... Um, Distributing the x squared n, we get the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n plus 2. And we have all of that equals 0. Okay, so uh, now we're good. Now the next thing we want to do is re-index so that we have the same power of x everywhere. 
Uh, and we're going to do that as follows. We're going to re-index. I mean, we have like a couple of choices here. We could re-index into n minus 2. We could re-index re into x to the n, or we could re-index into x to the n plus 2. And all are valid, although different bookkeeping tools would need to be used for each method. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-index into the middle, in other words, into the x to the n term. So, uh, you know, we've got two x to the n terms, and it's also in the middle, so that gives us kind of two reasons why we would want to do that. Okay, and then uh, also, as I do that, I'm going to change the indices, the starting indices for these sums as needed. So notice starting at n equals 2, I can change that to starting at n equals 0. Um, and that's because, um, actually, you know, let's not worry about doing that. So let's start that at n equals 2. What I do want to change is change this to starting at n equals 0 so I can combine these two exactly. Okay, so now let's re-index as needed. So we want, need to re-index this one up into x to the n. So that means here we're going to replace n with n plus 2. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That gives us the sum n equals 0 to infinity of n plus 2 times n plus 1 times a sub n plus 2 x to the n. Okay, good. Now these things that I kind of overlined in orange don't need to be changed at all, but I can combine them. So I can write this as the sum n equals zero to infinity. And now I have um, three n plus one times a sub n x to the n. Just combining those terms. And now over here, I want to index this down to x to the n. So that means here I'm going to replace n with n minus 2. Okay, good. So that's going to change this. So this will be the sum n equals 2 to infinity of a sub n minus 2 up to x to the n. And now we want this whole thing to be equal to 0. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll start from this point. Okay, so we left off at this point. We have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n plus 2, n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, x to the n. Another fr sum from 0 to infinity of 3n plus 1, a sub n, x to the n. And then a sum from 2 to infinity of a n minus 2, um, x to the n. And so we want to combine these together, but there's a problem. And the problem in this case is not the fact that they're indexed to a different power of x because they're indexed to the same power of x. The problem is that this one starts at n equals 2, and these two start at n equals 0. But that's okay because we can pick out the first two terms from each of these sums and then start them at n equals 2. So we'll do that. So let's see. This one goes as follows. So we want to pluck out the n equals 0 term and the n equals 1 term. And so let's see, the n equals 0 term is 2 times 1 times a2. Sorry, yeah, 2 times 1 times a2. So let's see, we get 2a2, 2a2. And then the n equals 1 term is plus 3 times 2, so that's 6, and then a3, x to the first power. Good, so that's the n equals 0 and the n equals 1 term, and now we have the n bigger than or equal to 2 term. We can put those all together into one sum, so we have the sum n equals 2 to infinity of this same thing, n plus 2, n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, x to the n. Okay, we're good. Now we'll do the same thing for this next term. So we'll take out the n equals 0 term, and we'll also take out the n equals 1 term, and then we'll have the n bigger than or equal to 2 term. So let's see. If we take out the n equals 0 term, we're going to get a sub 0. So notice that's going to give you 0 plus 1 times that. Good. And now if we take out the n equals 1 term, we're going to get plus 4a1x. Um, 
Okay, good. So now uh, let's notice that we can mash the rest of the terms together. n equals 2 to infinity of 3n plus 1. Uh, a sub n x to the n and now we still have this last term but we don't need to do anything with that so that's plus the sum n equals 2 to infinity of a n minus 2 x to the n and now this whole thing needs to be zero because it's meant to solve the original differential equation. Okay, now we're good to go. We can combine all of the terms outside the sums, and now all our sums are both indexed to start at 2 and to have the same power of x. So um, that's good. We can simplify this quite a bit. So we can write um, our constant term. That'll be a0 plus 2a2. So that's combining 2a2 with a0, and then we also have plus 4a1 plus 6a3 times x. Okay, good. And then um, notice we have after that um, plus the sum n equals 2 to infinity of, let's see, we have n plus 2 times n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, plus 3n plus 1 times uh, a sub n, plus a sub n minus 2, and then all of this is multiplied by x to the n, and we have all of this is equal to 0. Okay, so let's see what that uh, tells us. That tells us that this is equal to zero because this is the constant term on the left-hand side. That tells us that this is equal to zero because this is the coefficient of x term on the left-hand side. And you know, the right-hand side is identically zero. And that tells us that this is equal to zero because, again, the coefficient of all the higher x terms is equal to zero. Okay, so I'll uh, summarize this and then we'll calculate some coefficients. Okay, I've summarized what we had on the last board. So we had a2 was negative one half a0, but we know a0 is equal to two by the initial condition, so that means a2 is negative one. Likewise, we have a3 was negative two thirds a1, but we knew a1 was one by the initial condition, so that means a3 is negative two thirds. And then for n bigger than or equal to two, we have this recursion. So a sub n plus two is minus one over n plus 2, n plus 1, and then 3, n plus 1, a, n, plus a, n, minus 2. So we've got this um, recursion that writes one term in terms of two previous to it, and then two previous to that. Okay, so let's calculate a couple more. So let's see, a4, so that's going to be a, a2 plus 2, so that's going to give us, so that means n equals 2 in this equation, so that's going to give us 1 over uh, 4 times 3, so that'll be 1 over 12, good, and then we have, again, n is 2, so this is 6 plus 1, which is 7, and then we have a2 um, plus, and then uh, let's see, n minus 2, so that's going to be plus a zero. Okay, good. So notice uh, a2 was equal to negative one, and then a zero was equal to two. So that makes uh, the inside of that equal to um, negative five, and then we have negative one twelfth, so that means the whole thing is five over twelve, so this gives us five over twelve. Okay, now let's calculate a5. So a5, so that's going to be a3 plus 2. In other words, n equals 3, so that's going to give us minus 1 over 5 times 4, so that's going to be 20. And then we have, let's see, 3 times 3 plus 1, so that's going to be 9 plus 1, which is 10. And then we have a sub 3. So a sub 3 plus a sub 1. Okay, good. And so notice that's going to give us uh, negative 1 over 20. And then, let's see, a sub 3 was negative 2 thirds. So negative 2 thirds. 
And then a sub 1 was 1, which we can write that as 3 thirds in order to uh, combine these fractions. So no notice we've got negative 20 over 3 um, plus 3 over 3. So that's going to give us negative 17 over 3. So notice we get 17 over 60. And so notice uh, our goal was to find a0 through a5, and we've done it. So this is the end of the example.